I like to think Marcel ate this for breakfast every day. Oh hey, my name is Nadia and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In case you couldn't tell, I'm a super big fan of the show Friends and while I was at the bookstore the other day, I picked up the Holy Grail. This is the official Friends cookbook and let me tell you something, they went off in this cookbook. There are so many recipes in there, it's amazing. I realized that it has been a very long time since I used a physical cookbook in the kitchen. I usually have the recipe on my phone or on a random piece of paper. So I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to get back in the swing of using a cookbook um, and also review it a little bit because I feel like people think cookbooks are overrated because like I said, you can just get everything online. But I feel like there's something different about this one. And I, if you're a Friends fan, you'll know what I mean. Today we're gonna be making Marcel's nutty, chocolatey, cakey French toast thing, stuffed French toast. So this is from season one, where one of the characters, Ross, had a capuchin monkey named Marcel. Um, so this French toast is inspired by the monkey. And I'm really excited because it's not one of the first foods that I would think of when I hear the TV show Friends, but I'm, I'm drooling, I'm really excited. So on that note, Let's get cooking. I also paid extra to get the recipe book that comes with this special apron, which just makes everything that much better. Okay, now we can get cooking. The first thing that I like to do with any recipe is just read over the instructions so I know exactly what to expect when I'm making it. So we're gonna start off with the first step, obviously, which says, Working lengthwise, make a two inch slit about half an inch deep in the crust of each slice of bread. So I have my bread here, and it's actually not the bread that they recommend using in the recipe. This is actually Kornet Pogacha. So if you remember from probably four months ago at this point, I made Kornet Pogacha or like croissant bread. It was that kind of big loaf of bread that had a bunch of layers in it. And um, it took me a couple tries to get the right consistency of dough. And like I said, it didn't go to waste. My mom used that dough and made her own pogacha, which she then sliced. So this has actually been in the freezer for four months. It's still, it froze really well. It's not freezer burnt. Um, so I'm actually gonna use that to make the French toast today. I think the recipe recommends cutting the bread into three inch slices, but these are definitely not three inches. So it might be a little bit messy, but that's okay. I feel like French toast is one of those things where it's okay to be messy. All right, so I'm gonna start with these four slices and if we need more, we'll cut more. Now that the bread is sliced, we can move on to the second step where it says to whisk together the mascarpone cheese, confectioner's sugar, and cocoa powder until well combined, and then add a pinch of sea salt to taste. I think I added too much salt, but I think it's gonna be okay. <laughs> also realizing that I should probably maybe use a fork to do this. Because I'm making such a small quantity of this French toast, I'm just doing it in a bowl and using a fork to mix it all together. But if this recipe turns out good and one day I want to make it for a bigger crowd, um, I could obviously just whisk all these ingredients together in a stand mixer. It would be a lot easier. All right, so this is looking really good. There's no clumps of any icing sugar or cocoa powder, which is awesome. Um, I was also worried that this was going to be a super runny mixture and that it was actually going to go everywhere once we piped it into the toast. But it's... It's solid, it's, it's not going anywhere. So I think we can move on to the next step. <laughs> fit a piping bag with a piping tip or prepare a plastic zip top bag with a corner cut off and fill it with the marscapo mixture. I'm using a piping bag instead of a plastic bag just because we have a bunch of them. And I fitted mine with the Wilton number 12 tip. It's just like a really big open circle. Gently squeeze a small amount of the marscapo mixture into a bread slit until the bread cavity is filled. Don't overstuff, otherwise it will leave a big mess when the toast is cooking. Set a Side on a baking tray, repeat with the remaining bread slices. We have our lovely pieces of stuffed bread and now we're gonna work on the batter that we're gonna be dipping them in before we go ahead and fry them to actually make French toast. So to do this, we're going to combine the heavy whipping cream, milk, cinnamon, vanilla, eggs, and orange zest. We all know how I feel about orange zest. I will not be adding orange zest to this recipe. However, if you like orange zest, go off. And then we're just gonna whisk that all together until it's properly incorporated about one to two minutes. This is looking properly combined. So we get to move on to the next step, which is actually dipping them and frying them. So I'm gonna set myself up in a little bit of an assembly line. And as per the instructions in the book, we're gonna place a large skillet or nonstick pan on medium heat and spray the pan with cooking spray. And then working in batches, dip the stuffed bread into the egg mixture until well covered but not soggy on both sides. Once adequately soaked, place one or two slices of stuffed bread in the pan. 
I'm surprised at how well it's holding its shape. I know that if the bread was a little thicker, it would be even better and more of the egg mixture would have been absorbed. So far, so good. Like, knock on wood, we're doing okay. I think Chef Monica would be proud. It smells really good, actually. Probably, definitely could have used a little bit more time on the other side. Oh, all the chocolate is melting now. That's just gonna burn! Ew! There's currently mascarpone chocolate filling seeping out of this toast, which I really should have expected because it's going to heat, so obviously it's gonna melt a little bit. At this point, I it will be okay. Once the French toast was nice and toasted, I transferred it to a plate and topped it off with sliced banana, toasted pecans, and maple syrup. French toast is done and it looks delicious. I'm not even gonna wait, I'm digging right in because I'm super hungry. I'm usually not the biggest French toast fan, but this is really good. Taste-wise, I'm giving this a nine. The only reason it's not getting a 10 is because I did oversalt the mascarpone filling, which it doesn't make it better, it doesn't make it worse, it's just kind of there and it's, it's not the greatest, but it's bearable. Recipe-wise, I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. I really like the way it was written. It was really easy to follow. I feel like this is one of those dishes that people will look at and they'll get a little bit intimidated because they see mascarpone and they see all these extra ingredients. It's not French toast. It's Marcel's nutty, chocolatey, cakey French toast thing, stuffed French toast. So there's just a lot going on. But honestly, you might surprise yourself. It was simple enough and I think everybody will enjoy and have fun making and eating this. I actually have the recipe and filling wise, it was absolutely perfect for filling these four pieces of French toast. But batter wise, I have probably enough for another three or four pieces. So I mean, I'll end up using this. I just won't have any filling, but that's fine because it's still gonna taste good. That's all from me this week, guys. I'm gonna keep enjoying this French toast, but if you like this video and you wanna see more videos of a similar style, either working through this cookbook or other cookbooks, let me know down below, and while you're down there, feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next Friday. Bye. Also, this bread, even though it was in the freezer for four months, man oh man, does it ever taste fresh. Four months? Mm-hmm. Four months. Every fly that you wear. my head going? This is in the way. Did you want coffee or something? Yeah, sure. I'm not I know. He's not smiling. Because I know you're going to ask, so I might as well just get it out of the way. The next step in the recipe... The next step in the recipe... Next! Gently sweet. Gently sweet. So we have our lovely piped... I was going to say sandwiches, but they're not sandwiches. We can call it the phalange. Regina phalange. Can you tell I've been watching Friends? <laughs> I got craved just so I could watch Friends. I'm a really big friend... Friend of fans. No. We are going to the present page. I made myself coffee too. Oh my god, I almost spilled the hot. I don't even know what to call it, like the French toast dip? Like the batter that you dip the French toast in before you fry it. I don't know if that's just called French toast, but maybe I just discovered something new. Once adequately soaked, adequately, fancy words. This mug is also like 10 times bigger than any other mug we have, so you can fit a lot of coffee in it. Coffee's getting kind of cold, though I really don't drink coffee that fast.